Hey there, everybody. How you doing this morning? It is Sunday morning. It is about 11.38 East Coast time. I am here at the offices of Citizen Journalism School, just a couple blocks in the White House. Also going to ask you to go to thepopulist.us. I'll be talking about that in a second, where at the top you can subscribe to the Stranahan Report. As soon as I'm done with this bad boy, I'm going to go do the Stranahan Report, where I keep you out of your media bubble and I show you what the top news stories on the left, the right, and the foreign press are. Uh, we're going to be expanding the Stranahan Report very soon. We are starting to build up the volunteer army out of people from Citizen Journalism School, which is awesome. And the big story right now, and of course I have a radio show, Fault Lines, with Nixon Stranahan, and I'm a correspondent for Next News Networks, and you can check all that out at The Populist. Hey. No, I didn't go to church today. I slept in. My family, my wife didn't go either because there was no hot water, but that's a long story. It didn't get shut off or anything like that. Otherwise, I'd be doing like a marathon. But uh, no, she just turned off she turned off the hot water and didn't. Boom. Hey, yeah, great login. Yeah, the other thing I'm going to do when I get off here is I got to post on the message boards. Uh, I got a couple things that I've written already that I got to post up there and some videos from last night. Hey, Vancouver. How you doing? Love Vancouver. Beautiful city. Beautiful city. So uh, here's what we're doing. Thanks very much for the reporting. Have you seen the report on the EB-5 stuff that I put together for you over at thepopulist.us? I want to talk about this. Let, let me just back it up for a second. If you've not seen it yet, go over there you'll see it's the top story right now on the populist.us it's a big resource was it helpful because a few people have seen it so let me ask you something before i get into this was it helpful a few people are saying yes they've seen it helpful in understanding the situation yeah good yeah, good. I was tr what I was trying to do was not overwhelm you, but put in enough information and enough different stories so you could understand things. And again, it's, it's an interesting thing that I'm trying to do at The Populist, which is present news in a different way, which is not waste my time uh, reinventing the wheel. Oh yeah, re retweet this puppy too, by the way. Let's, let's talk about this. Um, uh, writing a lot of connective tissue, but just giving you a different perspective. Yeah, a different, someone says it's a different perspective, giving you a different perspective on things. Um, so here's, here's the deal on this. Let me explain a couple things that are on my mind about this. I'll talk about the do-gooder aspect of this in a second, because it's important to understand. But let me talk about the media response, right? The, the media response on this is going to be interesting because and we're starting to do this here's an interesting thing about citizen journalism school we're starting to get the blogs up for people if that doesn't make any sense to you go to citizenjournalismschool.com check it out when you sign up for a yearly membership you get a blog it's interesting how many of the blogs coming up are people talking about populism i love it and i don't require it i don't care what your ideology is in other words Citizen Journalism School, I don't tell you what to think. Not interested in that. Uh, but it's interesting how many of the blogs are by people who started, are populist blogs. Very interesting. Good names and stuff like that, too. Hey, man, how you doing? Say hi to Rockport for me. Uh, it's very interesting. Now, we don't have a populist press. Suddenly, I'm seeing these blogs and I'm seeing that that's where the future is right now. It's not even right-wing. Yeah, so it's interesting. Fox is the only right-wing source picking up the media. You watch. They're going to follow because they're going to have to. Because, again, this is, that's why I included all those Breitbart stories. Breitbart is in a quandary right now. Now, Breitbart has been getting better partially. Look, here's my philosophy on Breitbart. You know how I, if you're a, a fan of mine and you follow this stuff, I say all the time, you need to push Trump, right? That's what I say. Now, you heard me say that. Well, I feel you need to push Breitbart, too, and specifically, I need to push him sometimes. Sometimes, they need to be humiliated into doing the right thing, okay? 
They don't need a, a, a story about Milo with a snake. You know, I mean, I mean, Raheem Kassam, I love Raheem. Raheem posted something last night about uh, it's uh, going to be the conservative versus libertines. This was beyond libertine, right? This is beyond libertine. The, I'm just going to say this real briefly, and I don't want to get off on a tangent in it because I'm really only interested in it as far as it relates to journalism. But for a, jour but for a Breitbart reader and a Breitbart fan... The Milo stuff has degenerated into open debauchery. Am I missing something? And again, I ain't a prude. But the message is just open debauchery and a throne. No, I don't, like, no, I'm not cool with that. I'm just not cool with that. It's one thing to have a party. It's another thing to have a party with adult beverages. It's another thing that, right, whatever. And, and weed is kind of in that category as well, and people were smoking there, but whatever. But the fact is, when you get into open debauchery, you're creating a slippy, slippery slope. There we go, it's a problem. So anyway. But um, Breitbart needs to be covering the CB5 story, because as I point out in my article, Breitbart has pointed out Multiple writers of Breitbart, not just, I think I've written some stuff, but I may not have written that. I mostly wrote about it for my old website, which is gone when I was up in South Dakota. Uh, but the EB-5 thing's a big scandal. I've been working on it for three, four years, three, three years now. Uh, but there's not a populist press to talk about it, so the press is either right or left. And the problem is, the EB-5 scandal is something that's pulled in people from the right and the left. This is why populism exists, because both the right and the left have screwed you. And people get that, and people thought Trump would be different, and I still hold out hope he can be different. But he's got to be held accountable. And I'm down with what Steve Bannon said. When Steve Bannon said at CPAC, you need to hold us accountable, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Now, here's why this EB-5 thing is so awful. That's what you need to do, too. And you're going to need to hold the White House accountable. And you're going to need to hold Breitbart accountable. And you're going to need, if you care about this stuff, to call into the Breitbart Sunday show tonight and talk to them about it. I, I can tell you for sure, on my show Fault Lines with Nixon and Stranahan, we're going to talk about this tomorrow. I can tell you absolute for, for sure we're going to talk about it. Because I've already written about it, and I, uh, I ain't scared. <laughs> And Garland sent me a note about it after I'd been talking about it. But, but, but it doesn't matter if just, this is the reason I formed the school. Uh, I'm going to go back to Milo for a quick second because there was something else that was on my mind. Milo really is the leader. He set the tone for this pack of self-absorbed, self-interested political stunt people who are more interested in crowds chanting things than they are in deep thought. And that's really unfortunate. And so the whole thing, like Cernovich, like wants to be Milo very clearly. He's doing it his own way, right? And a lot of, a lot of these people over there, Lucian Wintrich came out of that Milo thing. And they're profoundly selfish. There's a real lack of spiritual centeredness with any of them. They don't even claim it, right? And uh, there's a selfishness, a look at me sense of that. And really, what I'm trying to do in a sense is the opposite of that. Really what I'm trying to do in the essence is, at essence is work really hard and engage other people. And that's why sometimes it irritates people on Twitter. If people approach me with criticisms, and again, I, I, it's partially based on being a Christian, I try, and I'm, I'm, I suck at it sometimes, I really do, I, I, I admit that. But I try to engage people with Socratic reasoning to make them think through things. So if somebody attacks me yesterday on Cerno, for instance, 
I try to go, well, are you in favor of accurate journalism? This is a purely Socratic approach. I don't block people. I try to engage them in conversation often. Are you in favor of accurate journalism? Then I point out things he said that aren't accurate, and then I do that all publicly, and people can watch it unfold, right? It's a very populist approach, in my opinion, which is I have a great deal of faith in people's ability to think through things, and I don't get upset if people can't snap out of it right away, because it takes a while for people to break through confirmation bias, and media bias and get out of their media bubble and everything else. It takes a while for people to be able to do that and I'm cool with that, okay? So on this subject, the EB-5 thing, what's interesting is both Democrats and Republicans are sucking at that teat. That's what's going on there, okay? Republicans love EB-5. Up in South Dakota, it's all Republicans running things, okay? Now, let me bring up the do-gooder aspect of this that I talked about in the uh, title for this. You have to understand that the EB-5 programs that are brought forward are, the EB-5 program was said, this is, a, this is a very liberal trick. This is a very leftist trick. Here's the thing we want you to be aware of. They call it... Uh, Peter Schweitzer, the great author of Clinton Cash, uh, when I spoke to him he, once, he was very clear on its, it's doing well while doing good. This is how limousine liberals operate, which Jared Kushner and Ivanka and Gary Cohn, they're part of that. Let me explain the New York charity circuit. I'll come back to that, but I want you to try to dig this whole thing because it's really important to understand the way they operate. This is doing well while doing good. The Clinton Foundation does it. Hamdi Ulakaya from Chobani does it. Once you see it, you start to see it everywhere. Okay, once you see it, you'll notice it and you'll understand the game they're playing. Okay? Because it's a very progressive trick. We want to help people and we're gonna do this thing that's gonna help people. We're gonna help the poor and the unemployed and the economically disadvantaged. Meanwhile, over here, while we're helping the people, we're raking in billions, baby. We're raking in the billions. We're smoking cigars at the end of the day and sticking them in interns because we're raking in the billions, baby. You know, I'm not, I did not have sex with that, right? Boom, but hey, we're doing good over here. That's pure Clintonian. Alinskyite fakery, right? This is exactly why these people are so awful. This is really exactly why they're so awful. Okay? The, the, Bill Clinton's a feminist who stuck a cigar in an intern. Need I say more? Right? But this is exactly what they do. They figure it out. Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton are 60s radicals. She worked for a communist law firm. Bernstein Truhaft in, in Berkeley, communist, literally communist, supported the Black Panthers when she was at Yale. Bill Clinton, have you seen him in the Buffalo Springfield jacket? You've seen that when he had the full beard and stuff like that? Then what they did was, and this is what I said, I was in an argument with somebody who was like, Black Lives Matter didn't blah, blah, blah. You don't get it, baby. People on the left, here's the trajectory. Radical, radical, radical profit, right? Radical, radical, radical profit. And if you kill a few people along the way, eh, whatever. Whatever. But that's the way they roll. Radical, radical, radical profit. Cha-ching. Right? It goes from the people united will never be defeated to cha-ching and smoking cigars at the end of the day. But they never give up the radical side in the sense, right? that they're always like pushing for the people, man. We're for the people. We're for the people. Get me Monica. I'm for the people, right? For the people. And that's what they do. So this EB-5 program is exact, and I could give a zillion examples of how they do this. There's an article in the Washington Post. Black Lives Matter has, have, have gone mainstream. They always go mainstream. Do you know why? Because protests suck. And you hear the chants about a zillion times, and they're not funny anymore. 
right? And making money is more fun. And that's why the radicals always go pro, right? That's what happens. You've seen it. Now, the CB5 thing, they do it. Oh, we're going to help the poor. Oh, we're going to help economically disenfranchised area. I linked at the bottom of the page to David North stuff. David North, he's got an article in there. I forget the name of it, but it's really good. It's detailed, though. I didn't want to overwhelm people. But it's on the David North. Go check out the website, The Populist. Top story at the bottom. I linked to David North stuff. He's very good on this. They gerrymander things. They go, okay, well, this here is now an economically disenfranchised zone. And he did something where he set up something across in the White House as an economically, by gerrymandering, and by including it with some poverty areas, it's an economically disenfranchised zone. Okay? Now, Bannon obviously knows all this, because Breitbart's written about it. But who benefits from these things? Who benefits from these things? People like Jared Kushner. And he comes from a family of people. Jared Kushner is the swamp. Jared Kushner's father, Charles Kushner, is the swamp. The biggest political donor in already well-known as corrupt New Jersey, right? The biggest political donor in New Jersey, right? Who went to prison when he was under investigation by Chris Christie for setting his sister's husband up with a hooker, videotaping it, and then blackmailing them to avoid the investigation into his campaign contributions. That's as swampy as it get, folks. That's a smelly swamp. That's a kill him, you're gone. You gotta go. You can't be here and, and be like that. You can't, you can't, what do you mean kill him? What's wrong with you? Are you mentally, oh, you're gone, never mind. Yeah. So here's the point, though. You don't get more swampy than that, in my opinion. You don't get more swampy than that. So the way to expose the swamp, let me, you know how you, I mean, here's one way to get rid of a swamp. Yeah, if you, someone's saying if that's what he did to family, you can imagine what he did to us. How do you expose, how do you get rid of a swamp? How do you drain a swamp? Right? light, right? You expose a, a bright light to it until it starts to dry up. Does that make sense? You expose it until you dry it up. This is why I believe in journalism. This is why I'm passionate about journalism. This is why I believe, this, this is why, and again, I always, I, I'm gonna lose some people. I don't take days off. I take the day off where there's no news. That's the days I take off. Right? So my point is, uh, I'm gonna, I get a trip, a, a weekend with my wife and kids <laughs> planned soon. But even then, I'm still gonna do a little bit of work. Uh, uh, but I got a weekend. Oh, look, I work Monday through Friday. I got the radio show Monday through Friday. I got a J-O-B, right? So. There we go. So the key here is to expose it. And again, that's why I'm so passionate about journalism. The WikiLeaks were so awesome in the sense that they exposed the background of the swamp. Then they got derailed at the end with this Pizzagate BS. Way to derail it and bad journalism promoted by self-absorbed, self-possessed, people with spiritual deficiency. I don't know how else to put it, right? But it's okay. It's okay. You fight back against that with journalism. That's what you do. Well, you say you don't believe in journalism. What do you believe in? I don't, it's just someone's saying they don't believe in journalism. Yeah, I, I don't believe in the current practice of journalism. I believe it was, yeah, PC, no, it's not. But you, here, the person, by the way, saying Pizzagate is real, how much of your life have you wasted? How much time? This EB-5 story is really important. I'm not going to let you waste time on it. You shouldn't waste time on it. What, 
That's it. That's it. No, I don't think WikiLeaks did expose the hammer. I have not seen that story. No, yeah. Here's the problem with pizza. It's also high carb. Anyway, yeah, it's a complete waste of time. Anyway, love you guys. I got to get to work. I got to do the strain hammer report again. The end times, blah, blah. Not the end times, but the end of the periscope, blah, blah, blah. Do me a favor. Go subscribe to the free strain hammer report because it's free. Free beer free. Always going to be free. It makes, takes you out of your media bubble. Go to thepopulist.us. Go sign up for it. I'm going to link to some stuff in there. If you're, not, if you're part of Citizen Journalism School, I'm going to write on the forums. I have a piece I'm going to put up on the forums, some video. Uh, the daily briefing, we talk about how important the forums are. If you're not part of Citizen Journalism School, I made some videos for you. Go check them out. It explains what the school is, what the special we have operating now is, if you're a yearly subscriber, and so on and so forth. Anyway, love you guys. Talk to you later. i got work to do. I'll talk to you later.